All right, so we're gonna look at changing the battery on our Cessna 150. Uh, very similar change in the battery on a 150, 152, 172, 170, uh, most of the Cessna products. Um, very, pretty much the same thing you're gonna do on any of the Piper products as well. Just many Piper products have uh, the battery located in the back seat instead of under the cowling here next to the engine. So first things to do is remove these pins on your battery box, put them somewhere you're not gonna lose them. I like to kind of clip them right there on the handles just behind the cowling there. If you have trouble reaching these ones, you can use a little pair of needle nose pliers. Now we got those two removed. You can go ahead and lift the lid off of our battery box. You can see this battery was replaced in 15th of September 2012, so four years. That's about the life of that battery. Um, it's actually pretty good for a gill battery. They tend to only last about two to three years in my experience. Um, we're going to give it a shot with the Concord one. You can see you have six little um, caps you can unscrew here. And there's some electrolyte down in there. There's what looks like water. That's actually electrolyte. And you want to top that off from time to time. Usually when your plane goes in for annual or 100 hour, or even sometimes on the 50 hour inspections, they'll top off that fluid there just below the uh, rim and keep the battery topped off in electrolyte. It keeps it from overheating. Um, if it runs out of electrolyte, it can't produce power or keep a charge. Um, so basically stops being a battery. Um, however, that is battery acid. That is um, some variety of hydrochloric acid maybe. Um, it's an acid in any sort. And acid and aluminum don't work so well. They corrode quite spectacularly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this gill battery and replace it with a Concord sealed battery. I'm just gonna break these nuts free here. Use some caution there though, if this battery does have charge and you're using a pair of pliers and you put it on the positive terminal and you allow part of your pliers to touch the metal frame of the airplane, you're gonna have a uh, little bit of a spark or a little show there um, because you're basically uh, closing the circuit since this uh, negative part of the battery is grounded to the aircraft. Now you can touch the negative terminal all day long to the metal, but best not to touch any terminal um, and also part of the aircraft with your pliers. Obviously touching it, you know, with your hand, you're not gonna transfer uh, 12 volts through your body very easily. And make sure you save those uh, nuts off the uh, battery terminals just in case you need them at a later time. Lift straight up on your battery and it should come right on out of there. So our battery box is not looking too bad. Just to be on the safe side, we're actually gonna just spray some corrosion X down inside there. Um, given that this is a very old 150, um, I'm just gonna kinda do a little general dusting. Um, I don't really care too much about um, the uh, corrosion X getting everywhere, but I wanna protect the aluminum on this airplane, especially from any battery acid that might be lingering down inside there. So we're gonna go ahead and get our new battery at this point. Before we install the new battery, we wanna go ahead and take a good look at it. We'll remove these handy little covers they put on our terminals and get a voltmeter and check that it is in fact charged up and ready to go. Otherwise, we'd wanna go ahead and throw it on a charger. They say they ship these things all charged up, ready to go, but who really knows? And note that the uh, connections are slightly different on this Concord than they are the gill. If you're replacing a gill battery with another gill battery, um, with those six ports, um, six cell battery uh, with electrolyte, there's actually a little bit more of a procedure where you want to fill up the electrolyte to a certain level, charge the battery some, fill it up a little bit more, charge it again, load test it, make sure everything's going good. Um, with the Concord battery, we're supposed to be able to just pull this right out of the box and throw it in the airplane. Uh, just to be on the safe side, we're going to check the voltage. We're also going to um, throw it on the charger a little bit, make sure it's fully charged up. All right, so we've gone ahead and we... Uh, we did a voltage test um, on our battery. We uh, then put it on the charger for a little while, did another voltage test, everything checks out good. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we put some dielectric grease onto our uh, bolts there to hold our battery cables in place. Dielectric grease is basically just a form of silicone that uh, is kind of inert. It's not gonna transfer electricity or leak electricity. It's just gonna protect the electrical connectors from uh, corroding um, with uh, all the salt air and uh, moisture that we have down here in Florida. 
uh, tighten them down just a little bit here, and then go ahead and get a torque wrench, and we're going to torque them to 70 inch pounds. Not 70 foot pounds, 70 inch pounds. So 70 divided by 12, uh, just slightly less than five foot pounds of torque. So not too tight. Uh, we're just gonna snug them down ever so slightly, go ahead and get our uh, torque wrench, and uh, snug them down the rest of the way. All right, next step here, gonna go ahead and get our covering back on our battery. So we got our lid for our battery box in place. Make sure it's not bound up on any of the corners. It's fully covering the battery box as it's intended to. Those little cutouts line up with our grommets very nicely. And everything looks good there. The straps fit back into those little slots that those pins will go into to hold everything together. And we'll go ahead and get our back pin slid in first. Now, if you're doing this on another airplane, oftentimes you'll find uh, vent boxes, um, or I'm sorry, vent tubes, um, a vented battery box, basically. Um, and you'll want to make sure that all those uh, hoses and everything will look good at that time. Check that the battery box is actually getting airflow as it should to vent out any of those uh, gases that can actually catch fire um, and certainly cause a lot of corrosion inside your battery box. So our battery box is back together. Our uh, battery terminals are torqued. Everything's connected, the battery's charged, and we tested it. We're gonna go ahead and um, do an ops check on the airplane. Also, uh, we're gonna go ahead and look at what the logbook endorsement uh, needs to read as a uh, owner operator, um, pilot owner, basically doing this maintenance yourself as a, not as an A&P. Um, so we'll go ahead and examine what phraseology to use in the logbook, and also go ahead and check the voltage and everything inside the aircraft. All right, so I'm inside our Cessna 150 here. We've got our master switch turned on, our turn coordinator is running, and I've got in my hand here the best kept secret in aviation for a universal volt tester, if, uh, or volt meter rather. If you have a amp meter in your aircraft and you've thought about having a volt meter, which would be sure would be great as a, uh, another way to check that your electrical system's in good shape, um, you don't want to spend 100 or 200 or $500 installing one or you don't have room in your panel, go on Amazon and buy one of these things for 10 bucks and you can charge your iPad or iPod cell phone off of it. And it's also going to give you a great reading as to what your voltage is on your aircraft. So we see we have 12.5 volts right there. That is excellent. Um, if I was curious if that's actually working right, we pull on our landing lights and look at that. Down 12 volts, it's showing zero amps for uh, how much amperage we're pulling, charging, because we don't have anything plugged in right there. Um, but that is a very good way to know that your electrical system is in good shape. And of course, keep your uh, cell phone charged up while you're flying. So go ahead and turn off my master switch here. And uh, so we're sure we got good power, um, good voltage. And the only thing that we have left to do is um, go ahead and flight test the aircraft, make sure that it's in good operating order, and make a logbook endorsement. So let's go ahead, make that logbook endorsement, and then go take our airplane flying and uh, ops check the aircraft, make sure that everything looks good and um, it's safe for flight. So there's a couple essential things we're looking for in this logbook endorsement, and there's some uh, wiggle room in what exactly you write down, but the things that you really essentially need are going to be the airframe total time, the recording tack time, the date that you did this, and something describing the work you did. Did you follow um, the steps outlined in the maintenance manual? You can just simply say replaced aircraft battery in accordance with Cessna maintenance manual. Ops check OK, followed by your signature, your name, and your uh, private pilot or commercial pilot certificate number. And that's all you'll really need. Now, uh, we can make this entry here, and of course if we're changing a gill battery with a Concord, we'll probably need an STC and let an IA take care of that paperwork. Uh, but if we're simply replacing a gill battery with a gill battery or a Concord with a Concord, um, and STCs have already been filed, then we can simply just go ahead and make this entry ourselves. Um, basically just you're outlining the work you did so people know exactly what you did. If you followed the Cessna Maintenance Manual, perfect, just write that, saves you a lot of writing. And that's all you need. Once you got that logbook entry in there, you're complete. You can even add something in there to the effect that you flight tested the aircraft, um, but you really don't need to. Um, but certainly I do recommend uh, taking the airplane flying and then looking back inside there, making sure nothing's shifted, all the battery cables are still attached all right, and uh, everything checks out okay. The battery is taking a charge from the aircraft, and uh, everything looks good. So 
Hopefully this uh, shows you how to replace the aircraft battery uh, safely and quickly on your aircraft. Any questions, just put them in the comments below. Remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you get to fly every day. And if not, then fly8mikealpha.com. See you guys later.